Well, everybody, I'm back, and you better put your seat belt on. We have a baller in the house today, <laughs> all of all the way from Manila, Philippines, and we have Joshua Tungle, and uh, he's a best-selling author, spiritual teacher, healer. I call him a law of attraction expert and teacher. He's a baller on YouTube. I say he's a YouTube <laughs> sensation in the areas of manifestation and the law of attraction. He has his own podcast and he just has a way of breaking down universal principles and so excited to have him back on the law of attraction radio network. I harassed him for almost a year and a half and he finally <laughs> gave in. Uh, so Joshua, welcome back to the law of attraction radio network. Constance, it's good to be back. So, you know, it, it wasn't harassing. It was a friendly uh, request. <laughs> <laughs> and since you have the same birthday as my wife, I had yeah, to do it. I, no, I, him, no, I, I wanted to do it. <laughs> I said, hey, I got the same birthday as your wife, and I think that got me over. So, Joshua, <laughs> what's up? How have you been doing before we get, get started? Now you've been work I know you've been working on a lot of projects. How are you doing? Yeah, I'm good. I've uh, just been chilling. Um, I've, you know, what I told you in the messages, I took a break for probably over a year from doing interviews so you know even though you you asked me before um I just said no to I just needed a break and just wanted to focus on certain things um but now that I'm back to doing it you're the first one uh, I've been looking forward to it can't say no to you even if you <laughs> didn't have the same birthday as my wife I still would have said yes uh but I'm excited for 2023 and I appreciate once again the honor of being on your show so yeah. it's been good. And, and you know you you have the gift Whenever I see an email from you and whatever I'm doing, I just drop it. What is he saying this <laughs> week? You, you have the gift of really breaking down the law of attraction and manifestation. So I'm going to let you start because I got like 20 questions. But what do you feel like people need to know or understand about manifestation and the law of attraction? Yeah. Well, what people need to know, I, I guess one of the things I could clarify is that a lot of people always, you know, they'll comment it or they ask me, it's like, how, how do you manifest? I'm like, well, you manifest all the time. So the question comes down to is just how do you consciously create, right? The things that you actually want in your life, but you're doing it all the time, the things that you want and a lot of things that you don't want as well. So I guess one of the things, if, if you're leaving it up to me to bring up the first topic is to really discuss what's the secret to manifestation? Because I think a lot of people get too caught up with the techniques and I'm all for techniques. I teach them on YouTube, but it's not about the techniques unless you understand the way the mechanics work of manifestation, right? So I always ask people, uh, what's the secret, you know, and then they'll, they'll say, ah, uh, it's visualization or it's feeling. And, and then I'll always try to break it out for them and say, well, there's a lot of things we visualize. It doesn't happen, <laughs> mm -hmm. right? Or there are times where you'll feel certain things doesn't happen either. So what does that really mean though? And what I try to do is I try to break that down for people to give them the gist, you know, of what feeling really is, because that's the secret, right? Whether we're teaching it from a law of attraction perspective or um, Neville Goddard, who, you know, his book is well known as feeling is a secret. And I want to be able to clarify what that actually means. So did you want me so, to just so, go yeah, ahead? Yeah, yeah, go ahead. So, you know, that was one of my questions. What does that mean? Break that down for listeners, because we all know yeah. techniques. We all know visualization, vision boards. So so what is the, the whole uh, deal behind feeling? Yeah, so it, it's an important one, because like I said, every time I would ask people like my clients when I'm coaching, like, what's the secret? They're very quick to give that answer. It's the feeling, Josh. All right, what's the feeling mean? Uh, <laughs> and then they go like that, they'll say, um, it's when, you know, your emotions or when you're super happy and you're in that high vibration. I said, well, can't you manifest a lot of things when you're not super happy? You know, there are some depressed millionaires out there, mm -hmm. <laughs> right? And then there are those other people who, unfortunately, you know, they, they can actually be happy in many ways, but they're broke. So what's going on there, right? Like, and if we were to get really technical, you're manifesting things all the time. Like you can manifest your lunch today. That's a manifestation because not everybody does that, right? Some people, they mm -hmm. don't have the money for it or the means, whatever. But yet you can manifest your lunch on a day where you feel really, really down. 
right? I'm not encouraging you to feel down, mm -hmm. but so, so what do we mean by emotion then? Because like I said, people have this misunderstanding, I think, of having to feel super, super excited all the time, right? But that's not to say that you can never feel emotions. Obviously we do, you know, like a super happy kind, but that's not what feeling means. And so if I were to just get to like directly right to it, Constance, when I talk about feeling, when Neville Goddard talks about feeling, and I'm going to use Neville because I, I, I'm very much inspired by his work. Mm -hmm. When Neville talks about feeling, he's not referring to emotions. And that's, a, that's an eye-opener for a lot of people because, like I said, very um, everyday things we manifest without feeling super ecstatic and happy all the time. When he's talking about feeling, he's talking about the acceptance of the fact mm. that your desire is already yours. That's it. And so there could be days where you don't even think that much about money. You're not even that happy. And then well, whatever money is being deposited in my account. But there's this knowingness. There's this confidence that you have, whether you're super happy <laughs> or whether you're super sad, you can manifest money because you believe, right? And so that's not to, that's not to uh, mistake the fact that emotions can be included. So I don't deny that, right? So you could have a strong emotion of being super excited that money's coming in. Right. So you're super happy. You're feeling that feeling that it's already done. Yeah, it's included. But that super high, happy emotion, ecstatic, all that is not necessary. The only thing that matters is belief. It's faith. It's the acceptance of the fact that it's already done. And that applies to everything. Healing, money, relationships, um, faith. It, feeling is faith. Right. If you want to say what's faith, it's feeling. Not feeling in emotions, but feeling that it's already yours which can include emotions, strong emotions sometimes that are super happy and super sad, <laughs> right? But of course I encourage to be happy, <laughs> Ooh, that, but that, uh, yeah. Just, so it's an acceptance of the fact that it's already done. It is that's mine it. now, even though your 3D world may be crazy and and yeah. all of that. Yeah, yeah, because um, like I said, it's just, we do, if we would just take an everyday situation, like I said, we manifest, quote unquote, little things every day, it doesn't matter what emotion we're going through, right? Uh, like I said, food, money for your uh, gasoline, for your car, it's a manifestation, right? Um, but there's a confidence when you're going to the fridge to manifest that glass of water, right? Even though that's kind of like a quote unquote smaller thing, but it's still a manifestation, not everybody has water. So we're manifesting things all the time because, oh, I just know water's in the fridge, no big deal. <laughs> I'm going to go to the grocery store to buy some food. Oh, no big deal. I, I know I, I have the money in my pocket, Josh. So there's this confidence, there's this faith, there's this belief. And I just tend to stay away from the word uh, faith sometimes, not that it's a bad word, but I just know that it's a very loaded word. And, you know, it has to do with like religion. And sometimes people get a little confused by it. like faith in God. Is it faith in Jesus? Like, well, you can, you know, explain it however you wish. But when I say faith, I'm just talking about the feeling that it's already done that it's already yours. I like using the word, there's a knowingness to it, right? Which yeah. is a more neutral term for people that are religious, non-religious. You can get that. You just know that you can manifest food easily later on today. You just know it, <laughs> no big deal. Um, and you can feel super excited about it and you can feel super grateful about it, which is a good thing. And so that gratefulness can be included in there, but underneath that gratitude, that emotion is the knowingness still that it's already yours. So whether, like I said, it's not, the emotions are not necessary, uh, but you, it can be included. The only thing that matters is faith. And that's, that's so knowing, good. that's a belief. Right? Okay. I've heard you talk about, and Neville, it's already done. Uh, you know, the Bible talks about the finished works of Christ. So if yeah. in creation, it's finished. So if we know that everything is already done and you said the universe plays no has uh plays no favorites so how would a person get into the knowingness of a thing or the acceptance how would they get into that what would yeah, that look like so, so that's where techniques come in <laughs> <laughs> okay so i tell people like you don't need to do a technique to eat breakfast tomorrow. I try to use these everyday situations mm -hmm. that is just very obvious. So like I said, we're, you know, well, it's evening here in the Philippines. In order for me to manifest breakfast tomorrow morning, I don't need to go to sleep imagining me picking up the fork and 
eating the egg, tasting the egg and the bread. and the I don't need to do that. That's a technique though, right? Why don't I need to do that? Because I already believe it. There's already a knowingness with me. I know I'm going to eat breakfast. No big deal. <laughs> kind of like me going to bed tonight, already knowing, already expecting that I'm going to wake up tomorrow. It's kind of mm -hmm. like a given. So the reason why we do the techniques is because we don't believe yet. It's because mm. it's not natural within us yet. And so the way that we do that, um, Constance, is through these techniques, like using your imagination. You just simply ask yourself this question. And I love it. Neville so clear and simple about it. He talks about how even kids can do this because we do it. You know, everyone does this. What you just ask yourself, what would it be like if it were true that you're now the person that you want to be, that you now have whatever, whatever it is you want to have? Oh, but Josh, I, I've never had it before. So how do I know? Just imagine. Mm -hmm. right you imagine it first that's you know if, if you think that you have to have experienced it first in order to know the feeling then how do you think of people who are inventors of things mm -hmm. who've never experienced quote unquote their invention right the first of anything so you imagine what it would be like well i don't know what it's like to earn six figures or i don't know what it, well well if you had the money what would you do mm -hmm. oh well if i had a million dollars i would buy such and such okay what, what would you hear well i would hear a lot of people being uh applauding me or even being envious of me you know you could even hear your friends' voices or relatives or something um how would you feel oh i'd feel so confident i would feel this sense of security boom that's it so when you're doing that you're, you're creating a state of consciousness within yourself because everything is consciousness everything is a state of consciousness right so when you were saying that it's already done it's true but what does that mean it means that, that there are an infinite number of states in this world, or let's be a little bit more mystical, let's just say. It's within you, Constance. It's within mm -hmm. me. Within us are an infinite state, are infinite states. And these infinite states, if you could imagine us as like a house or a mansion, and within this house, within this mansion, are a bunch of rooms, and these rooms represent different states of consciousness. What's a state of consciousness? Everything's a state. So, for instance, there's a state of wealth right? There's a state of poverty. There's a state of health. There's a state of uh, sickness. There's a state of being known, the state of being unknown. And you imagine those states as rooms in your house, so to speak. All you need to do is occupy those rooms. That's quote unquote state within yourself. Well, how do you do that, Josh? Like I said, you feel it. So you don't feel it now because you're still in that place of lack. But like I said, you ask yourself, what would it be like if you were wealthy? Oh, I would feel this. I would feel that. I would hear this. I would hear that. I would hear so-and-so say this to me. This is the way my, my friends would view me. This is the way I would view the world if I was wealthy. Well, then, boom, if you're able to feel it, you're, you're entering that state. Now, the problem, though, that people have is that they're able to enter the state but they don't remain there. <laughs> <laughs> they go to so the, like, they another room. <laughs> they, go, they go back to their room of poverty. They go back to the room of doubt and sickness, which is why they don't see it manifest, right? So that's that's another issue that can come up, I guess, that I could even address at this time because yeah, a ahead. lot of people could say, well, I went to sleep just in the wish fulfilled. I felt it as I was going to bed, but when I woke up this morning, well, I just felt <laughs> like my old self, my old state, and they felt like that the whole day. The Josh, why is it manifesting? I said, because yeah, you felt it. I don't deny that you're entering that state, right? This is what Neville says that one of the greatest tragedies of the world is uh, perpetual construction, but deferred occupancy. You're able mm. to imagine and imagine and imagine and imagine you're building, 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 but you're not occupying it. You're not dwelling there. You're not making it your home. So the person who has a poverty mindset and feels a state of lack, but then they do a technique that makes them feel wealthy but then right away and most of the day, they keep going back to that feeling of lack and poverty. Neville would say, that's their real dwelling place. Mm. That's really their home. So you have, so the question comes down to, well, then Josh, how many times do I have to do this technique? I said, it's different for everybody. There's no set number for it. This is what you do this 10 times, you know, and then you're set. No, everyone's different. As Neville puts it, you keep doing it until it becomes natural. To you mm. and what does it mean to be natural to you is when you're just constantly dwelling there most of the time mm. and it just feels so normal to you because for some people their state their new state of wealth is not comfortable for them 
right? It's like, oh, I feel weird eating in this fancy restaurant <laughs> mm-hmm. or something like that, right? So then, ah, I don't know. So you could even see that this new state is, is not really natural to them. So Neville gives an example. He's like, it's kind of like when you buy new clothes or you buy a new hat or something. And when you buy that new shirt or you buy that new hat, you're walking around, you're so conscious. This is my new hat. <laughs> this mm-hmm. is my new shirt. And you feel like everyone's kind of staring at you, but really they don't care. But it's not natural to you yet because you're so conscious of it. But you'll know that it's natural to you when you don't even think about it anymore. You don't focus it on anymore because it's become a part of you. You know, and that's what happened with him when he was in New York, when he bought his first suit. <laughs> and then he was walking around New York City and just so conscious of his new suit, saying, thinking everyone's staring at him. But in reality, they didn't care. But, you know, you wear it to the point where you don't even think about your new shirt or your new hat. And so when you go to this, quote unquote, nice, fancy restaurant, this wealthy place, it's just normal. It's so normal to you. But in the beginning, oh, when you up your game in consciousness of money, oh, that's new for people. Oh, mm-hmm. wow, I've never made 50 G's. I never made a hundred thousand, but then it comes to a point, which is pretty cool. Oh yeah, that's easy. But to other people, it's so far away, right? Because they're in another state. But when you become so natural in it, oh yeah, 50 G is easy, right? It's not a cocky thing. It's just a confidence thing. It's a knowingness. Yeah, I can do it. You know, so you you do the technique, you do these techniques of imagining because imagining creates reality, but to be more specific, imagining not in a sense where you're just saying some things in your head, Right? So Neville would kind of qualify it. It's imagination plus faith. So it's when you're seeing it, but you're believing it at the mm-hmm. same time. Because like I said, you could imagine something and just like, oh, yeah, you're just daydreaming. It's not just about daydreaming. It's daydreaming or imagining plus believing that it's already yours, which is, so, makes all the difference in the world. Yeah. So you... I, I, you mesmerize me, you know, and when I'm listening to you, you have such a gift of just breaking it down and even every oh, word thanks. you speak. Have people told you that before? I mean, just the Never, word. No, occupy. <laughs> <laughs> You're the only one. <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs> Oh, well, you're making me cry. And, and so you know, <laughs> even when you say occupy the rooms or the states, mm. just that word occupy, because yeah. like you said, so many people that do like morning meditation, but then all day long, they're <laughs> thinking lack and scarcity and all exactly. of that. Exactly. Which neutralizes what you just did in the morning. Oh, yeah. Right? So you got to like, you know, if you ever catch yourself slipping, you, you know, you, you just got to get back into it, get back into the state. You know, you don't need to beat yourself up because some people do like, ah, I don't know, Josh, just like right after that, I felt so down and doubting. Okay, okay, no need to beat yourself up. There's no point. There's no good to that. Get back into the state. You can do that. And then you just give yourself some grace and just start reimagining. So Neville says that it's about the frequency of of reimagining, not the length of time that matters. Mm. So what does it mean? Just keep doing it over and over because you're kind of conditioning your mind. Right, as you're aware of uh, this content, you're, we're conditioning our subconscious if we want to speak like that, right? So for example, if you're trying to get in this new state of health, you want to get in this new state of wealth, okay, you, you're kind of uh, going back and forth like a tennis match of doubt, belief, doubt, belief, but just keep doing it over and over. If you catch yourself uh, doubting again, then just reimagine again. So you could do that like when you're in the grocery store, just waiting in line, when you're in the shower, when you're in the toilet right? Just wherever you can do it, wherever you can remember, it's the frequency, not the length of time. You could be praying for an hour in the morning, but it's no good if you do it an hour in the morning and then 23 hours of the rest of the day, you're you're doubting and complaining about what you don't have, (laughs) right? So ultimately, we're getting people to a place with this whole statement of it's already done. And this is going to be a shocker for even some uh, people who believe in law of attraction is that you got to get them to stop desiring these things. Oh, yeah. Because desiring implies that you don't have it. Yeah. Right. Why would you want something that you already have? Why would you desire so badly, as people like to say, oh, you got to you gotta want it badly. Why would you want it badly? If like attracts like, you're just going to keep wanting things badly <laughs> and you'll mm-hmm. never have it. It's all about assuming the state, assuming the feeling, assuming the wish fulfilled, that it's already yours, that it's already done. So Neville talks about this person that this dream that occurred where he told this person said stop desiring and stop living your desire stop Mm -hmm. start living because like i said when you reach a point of imagining we're doing these techniques because we don't really believe we already have it yet but you're imagining so much to the point of satisfaction 
to that sense, to that point of relief where you could see it, you could feel it, you could smell the money, you could feel the money, you could taste the food, you could, you could feel the car to the point of satisfaction that when you're doing these imaginal acts, you don't desire it, you don't desire it anymore because what you want is already yours. And that's when you feel it so real. And that's what it takes to truly manifest, right? So good. So when people are yearning for love, yearning, yeah. I told somebody, stop yearning and start <laughs> having. There you go. <laughs> there you go. Right? So initially, of course, we initially desire something. No one does, okay. uh, denies it. Of course, I want to change my life. That's a desire. I want to you know, have love or money. That's a desire. You can have an intense desire, but you don't stop there. You move on to assumption, right? You move on to belief, to living, assuming the wish fulfilled. That's what it takes. But yeah, desire is only the first stage, but don't want it badly, right? Because then you're just going to create a lot of resistance. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, you teach so brilliantly uh, the law of assumption. Explain that to people who are watching and all the people that's going to be listening. Yeah, so um, it's just basically that everything is everything is a state, right? States of consciousness mm -hmm. and assumption. You just take that word and it's just you're basically assuming that whatever your desire is, is already yours. It's That's just it in a nutshell. You're assuming like, you know, but we tend to use assuming in a negative way. Hey, don't assume, you know what that makes you, <laughs> <laughs> you know, uh, but this in this sense, you're assuming it, meaning that you're becoming it in consciousness. Right. So there's this double identity. We'll say, well, I'm not a millionaire now, Josh, but you are in your imagination. And so Neville mm -hmm. says that when you have this experience in your imagination, you'll be haunted by the fact that there's this double identity that you had because you see your physical reality of not having all this money, but you felt the reality of being a millionaire in your imagination because there's this spiritual and, and physical, you know, um, reality that we live in. Right. So he talks about the third and the fourth dimension. So we live, everything is reality. So even if it's, you say you're imagining something, people need to start changing their language and stop, stop saying, well, that's just in your head. No, everything was first imagined. It's all mm -hmm. imagination, right? So if you want something to change, you don't focus on the action, right? This is where some people will trip up and say, well, you have to take action. Well, look at all the people taking action. They're still hustle, 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 and they're still burning themselves out. Right. Or people mm. who are even trying to heal their bodies and they're doing all these quote unquote physical action steps. This, I'm not against action, mm -hmm. but you, what really matters is that as within, so without you change your state of consciousness first, and then the physical will follow automatically. So yes, actions can start to flow from your state, but don't focus on the action. If your state of consciousness is still the same, because it's just like me before when I was sick and I had my injury um, over like 17 years ago. Wow, that 18 long. years ago, Constance, right? Mm -hmm. It was a long time ago, so I still mm -hmm. have full testimony. Um, imagine it that, that those days when I really couldn't eat anything because of my gastroesophageal reflux disease that I had. I was literally scared to eat everything. <laughs> you know, I was scared of like spicy, ketchup, acidic, soda, Filipino food especially because it's so oily. I had to stay away. So I had so much fear. Imagine if someone's like, just take action, Josh. Just do it, you know? Uh, act as if or fake it till you make it. Well, we have to be careful with what we mean by that because if I don't understand manifestation and I just take the action, guess what's going to happen? And it did happen. I started eating those foods that I wasn't quote unquote supposed to eat. And then I got affected and negatively in my body. I started having acid and vomit and all that stuff because I was just focusing on the action. But when I changed my state of consciousness and I'll never forget that day, my GERDs just completely disappeared totally in one wow. day. Yeah, because my consciousness changed. So whatever state you're in, which was the state of health that I finally moved into, I finally occupied, <laughs> right? I already was imagining myself eating the oily pizza mm -hmm. <laughs> and the hamburger and the French fry and the ice cream because I love that stuff and potato chip. I felt it real, right? And I dwelled there. And then my life completely changed. And then I quit the medication cold turkey that day, 17 years ago. Was that 2005, 2006? Yeah, so it's been a long time. So I know this stuff works. And, um, but yeah, that's what it, that's what, if I could even um, bring this other issue up. So what I love about Neville Constance has, has really been a game changer to help me understand this is that he make, creates a distinction between thinking of and thinking from. Wow. Right? So, so this is a, a really big difference because 
a lot of people, what they're doing is that they're thinking of, so what does that mean? Thinking of, like, for example, if you desire a new car, you're thinking of it, right? It's just, it's just an image in your head. Okay. But when you're thinking from your new car, you're experiencing your new car. So let me give an example. So I'm here in the Philippines. You're in the ATL. Oh, in the okay. ATL. <laughs> ATL. Woo -woo. Okay. So I'm here in the Philippines and I'm thinking from this room in the Philippines, but I'm thinking of Constance in the United States in the ATL, right? Because I'm thinking from here. I'm experiencing this reality, this, this physical reality. I'm thinking from here where it's very real. But when I think about you, I'm just thinking of you because I'm not really there. Now, to make manifestation occur is that you got to move from thinking of to thinking from where you're able to shift your consciousness away from this quote unquote physical reality and go to that destination where you go to the end of your desire. So instead of thinking of the car, I'm th thinking from the car. I go straight to the end where I'm living that reality of feeling the steering wheel feeling the, the seats, the leather seats of the car. I'm thinking from it all of a sudden. Now that's more real than being where I'm at, quote unquote, now in this other reality without a car because I'm in my imagination feeling the, the texture of the seats. How the heck could I feel the texture of the seats unless it's a real thing? Mm. You know, if I were to ask you, uh, Constance, like to just imagine biting into a big juicy lemon, boom, mm. all of a sudden you, you feel that sourness. It's like, oh, that's <laughs> nasty. Right. And so, but then, or I say, imagine smelling some roses, just smell it in your mind, feel the soft, silky petals. And some people are able to do that. Well, Josh, I smelled it. Well, how the heck do you do that? You just picked up the aroma in the air. There's no roses around you, right? You can't pick up a distinct scent of nothing. You can't imagine holding hundred dollar bills in your hands, in your imagination, but you actually feel its texture. You could even mm -hmm. smell it. It has a particular odor. You can't pick up a distinct feeling of money and say that it doesn't exist because it does exist. It exists in consciousness. It exists in reality, right? It's just not physicalized yet in this reality that's in front of you, but it's real. That's why I tell people what you imagine, what you feel, don't, don't underestimate it. You're experiencing a reality that you just got to keep tapping into in order to translate it and bring it into this physical reality but it's there so when you think of this whole thinking of versus thinking from when you think of your new home like i said you don't have it you're just thinking about it but when you're thinking from your new home and you could feel the floor in the kitchen and you could see your sofa and you could start touching the sofa the material of the sofa right you could see your bedroom and just start using all of your senses see touch taste smell and hear all of a sudden you're thinking from your new home because you're actually there. <laughs> you're there where? In consciousness. And consciousness is the only reality, right? So that's the thing. It's just as real, if not more, than what we're experiencing in this physical reality. So when you do that enough, you keep imagining enough, feeling the solidity of your, of your home, of your car, of the money. You're, you're tapping into that. And if you do it enough to the point of naturalness, then mm. it eventually objectifies and manifest in your world. If that makes sense. So what about people who say, Josh, it's just so hard for me to imagine. W yeah, what? so some people have that issue. Mm -hmm. right? and, and for some people, I'll give them a little push because it's, it's for some people, yeah, I get it. Um, some people have it harder than others to imagine. But let's just say that you really can't imagine, right? Then I'd say, well, that you just affirm. Mm. You just say something. Right. And, and so Neville would even talk about like, if you have a hard time, like committing to an imaginal act and creating a scene, then you, what you do is, is that you create a sensation, a feeling of, for example, you'll say, isn't it wonderful? Mm. Right. So he says, you pick one big sensation, right? I think of like a circle, something so big, so ecstatic that it include all the smaller desires that you have in there. So when you have this one sensation, this one quote unquote emotion, Right, this is where emotions can play a role, then it'll take care of itself. So if you say, oh man, isn't it wonderful that I'm, I already have the money, right? But in quote unquote reality, 3D, they don't have the money. But if they can't imagine it, they'll just affirm it to themselves. Like, man, isn't it amazing that um, something, ama so many things are happening to me today. Wonderful things are happening to me today. We're speaking in the present tense, 
right? Because mm-hmm. you want them to feel it now. You don't want them to speak it in the future. Oh, isn't it wonderful? Something marvelous is going to happen to me two days from now or tomorrow or later. No, no, no. You, it's always about the present moment. Man, isn't it amazing? We use our own lingo. Thank you, thank you, thank you that my bills are already paid, not going to be paid. Mm-hmm. Thank you, thank you, thank you that my body is already healed. So when you do that, once again, you're thinking from your, because you're feeling the reality of it, even if you're not seeing it in your head. So that's the beauty of it. It's not just, that's why it's good for some people. If you have a hard time seeing in your mind, like creating an image in your mind's eye, it's not about that. It's about the feeling, the feeling of what? Not the emotion, but the feeling of the reality of it, the confidence that it's already yours. It's already done. Thank you, Father, that my bills are paid. Thank Mm -hmm. you, universe that everything's going to be taken care of. Thank you. You know, and you just, you just do it in the present tense. Right. And yeah, affirmations really oh, help. So good. I just did a video on that, man. Cool. John, you, so, <laughs> so all things are possible. Is that right? Because all possibilities exist. Somebody said, yeah. you got to ask him this question. So, so when we live, occupy those different states of consciousness, yeah. can we have whatever we want in life? What, what would yeah. you say to that? I would say, yeah. And so this will be um, uh, a big shift for a lot of people, especially those like a religious background like myself, mm-hmm. right? Because when I was um, more, yeah, I remember, right? Like when we would, you know, growing up in a religious, I'm going to speak for myself where it was always about, Lord, is it your will? I don't know. Should I move to the Philippines? Is it your will? Is, you know, should I make this, you know, work at this job? God, is it your will? And we're always having to speak to some, some entity outside of us, mm. right? And determining what's quote unquote best for us. Oh, maybe I didn't get that job because I wasn't ready. The universe knew I wasn't ready or God knew I wasn't ready. Or maybe I have this sickness because God's not going to heal me because uh, he's just testing me trying to build my character right which no one is denying that your character was probably being built up i'm not denying that things can make us stronger but you look at all the people who manifest quote unquote bad things why didn't god just withheld from them and just say no they're not ready (laughs) they're gonna use that money for bad things like drugs or trafficking you know no we can manifest whatever you want the Mm -hmm. law is it's neutral you could use it for good you could use it for evil right and unfortunately People use it for evil, but I wouldn't say like, oh yeah, you could do it and get away with it uh, because, you know, it'll come full circle eventually, right? So I'll always tell people you live by the golden rule, but yeah, you can manifest anything that you desire and you don't have to ask, well, God, is it your will? Should I do? do? Well, it's in you, right? The it's desire in is within us. And mm-hmm. I'll say, well, who put the desire there? Especially the desires that are on your heart. Is that really your desire, your passion? Well, who gave that to you, right? And so you honor that. And say, and you could even wonder, well, this is my desire. I want this. Did God hear me? Well, if you and God are one, you heard you. <laughs> I love and all it. All you have to do is assume mm-hmm. it. You just have to assume it. So the answer is always yes, if you're willing to believe it. Right. So, yeah, I believe all states exist, which means everything exists. All you have to do is assume it, assume that state. What else do you feel like people need to know, Josh? You get lots of questions. What, what about, does money follow consciousness? Because we know a lot of people are hustling, uh, yeah. 25 different streams of income. <laughs> you got to grind. You got to you gotta do the work. So, yeah. so what's your take around money and manifesting money? Yeah, money is just energy once again. And it's, it's also a state of consciousness. Even the amount of money that we make on a regular basis, it's a state of consciousness. You know, or people who even think of like, yeah, usually that time of the year, we're usually struggling with money. And then they notice a pattern that every time that's part of the uh, year, their mm-hmm. money goes out. Or even when they make a lot of money, then an emergency happens where all their money gets drained and they didn't get to use it because there's this expectation and consciousness. So once again, it's all about what you're being aware of. It's what about you. It's what you're focusing on. It's what you're believing. So yes, there are levels of consciousness when it comes to money. So a person's consciousness of, you know, making $10,000 is different from someone who makes $15,000, right? And then, you know, just keep adding on the numbers, but it's all a state of mind. It's a, it's a belief. It's a feeling that you can make X amount of money. And that's why there's a lot of people who underestimate themselves and they want more money, 
but when they do their business, you know, they're, they're not, you know, selling their, they're selling their products just too super low or something because mm-hmm. they, feel like they don't deserve it, you know, and it's not a matter of deserving or not. It's a matter of just, what do you believe, you know? Um, but yeah, money is just consciousness. And in order to shift it, you just have to believe that whatever the amount that you want is already yours. And that's what we, you know, that's why we do the techniques that we recommend of what would it be like if you made X amount of money? Well, I would do this. I would do that. All right. Now feel into that. Really feel it. Right. Well, how would you sound like? Would you sound, would you, would you feel a sense of stability? Yeah. May, yeah. I would feel a little more stability, security. Yeah. yeah. Would you go on a uh, vacation trip? Yeah. Would, okay. Then that's a state of calm. But what if you didn't make that kind of money? Oh, I'd probably just stay home. <laughs> you know, uh, uh, yeah, I can't. Man. You gotta, we gotta pay for our bills. It's a state of consciousness. But when you can oh, believe, God. As I love that Neville quotes, you know, he says, the world is yours. Mm. You know, even the, the cattle's on the hills, everything, it's yours, right? So it's yours for the taking. And, and that's a thing, you know, like you, you don't have to go hungry. You don't have to struggle with certain things. But when people have a mentality that you have to struggle, you yeah. have to hustle, then you get what you believe, right? You really do get what you believe. So now I'll clarify, I don't, uh, deny that sometimes you can work hard. I have nothing wrong with putting in a lot of work and stuff. Mm-hmm. You know, you got to create stuff, create programs, or writing a book, um, but let it flow from your state. Mm. Right? Always go to the end and imagine the success. You know, Neville talks about there was a QA that he did where someone asked him, How can he be like a best selling author or something like that? He says, Just imagine everybody wanting to buy your book. Mm. You just go straight to the end. But, you know, for a lot of people, it just immediately go focus on the how okay i gotta put this much of money in advertising this is this is yeah i don't deny you probably do some advertising but focus on the end first live it and from when you dwell in the end when you live in the end neville says there's something called a bridge of incident will occur mm. the bridge of incident is just the process it's the journey it's the how but it's going to flow automatically from your state that you're that you're um dwelling in but like i said people focus too much on the how without dwelling in the end Right. And so that's the part where I'm trying to tell people, yeah, there's going to be a how, but don't worry about it because it's going to surprise you sometimes of the way that world universe, God will bring things about somehow, some way it'll come about. But you dwell on the end first, that feeling of reality. And Neville says that the state that you enter, whatever it is, wealth, health, love contains all the ways and means necessary to externalize it. So you don't have to worry about the how. Will there be a how? Of course, there's going to be a process. But don't focus on it because when you focus on the process, that's where the anxiety and the worry kicks in. <laughs> you know. But when you dwell in the end and then you feel it's already yours, oh man, I'm already there. Yeah. I can feel it. I can feel it. Wow, I could feel the success. You don't have to wait for the process until you finally make you know, this amount of sales or blah, blah, blah. No, you just go to the end. You feel the success. You feel the wealth, you feel being known, and then somehow the bridge of incident will come into play. They'll meet these random people that will recognize him. So, Josh, what does it feel like to be like a ball or a superstar on YouTube? Because, (laughs) I mean, did you imagine this uh, or did you just start saying, I'm just going to serve people? Because really, you're a YouTube phenomenal to me in the law Thank of attraction you. world. What is that? Thank Did you, you imagine you. that or? Yeah, I mean, I've always, you know, I've had, you, I've been on YouTube for quite some time, Constance, for, mm-hmm. you know, for many years. And I remember even before monetization, none of that was even there. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so my first video might have been like 2006 or 2007. So like mm-hmm. I said, I've been on for a long time, but there were so, my videos were so crappy quality at that time Mm -hmm. but I just remember in my heart I just wanted to uh, share messages and I think my first videos of was me speaking in a college speaking to um, a class I remember that video out there you know and so I've always been the type that when I find something that helps me I just feel like telling everybody because it's helped me you know so YouTube has been a platform that I'm very grateful for um, you know, just not having to depend upon, oh, I got to speak somewhere or rent, rent out this place, this room, <laughs> you know, but it's become such an amazing platform for me to reach people like you in the States while I'm here in the Philippines or other people around the world. And I, I've always imagined myself making a difference, you know, mm. and so thankfully YouTube has been that 
platform for me to do video and all that stuff. So it's been, it's, I'm so grateful for it. Really. Yeah. What's yeah, another so. amazing thing besides your beautiful wife that you, <laughs> that you man, if we got to include her in that, that you have uh, manifested in your life that was shocking, uh, amazing, astounding. What, what was that? Yeah. Thing? You know, I, it's funny because uh, last night I was just, you know, my wife went for a walk at around midnight and I was posting my video here in the Philippines. I said, Remy, I'll just lie down here while you go outside and take a walk. Get safe here where we're at. And that's the point that I'm getting at. I'm thankful for our home. Mm -hmm. So we have a beautiful home. And uh, my wife and I, we've been through a lot. I was even telling my wife before she stepped out. And my wife even said it today. She was like, oh, I'm so grateful for our home. I said, I know. Mm -hmm. you know. And for many years, we, we lived in a very small place and a studio. And you know, we lived in the States too, came back. And um, I was so grateful because in our home, I've, I, I love traveling a lot. Constance, mm -hmm. and so I love hotels like I love the bathroom hotels oh I love these big sinks <laughs> the sink is awesome you know or the shower is so nice and beautiful and and thankfully enough um the home that we manifested it's like a hotel it looks like uh. a hotel, you know and um I was even grateful I like to talk out loud especially when I'm by myself so I, I look crazy if someone's observing mm -hmm. me but I came upstairs today when I got home before the interview before this uh interview i was just i got i brought up my food i'm just like talking a lot thank you so much for our guards you know because mm -hmm. we have so many guards downstairs who just treat me so well you know mm -hmm. and um, i'm just grateful you know they they protect our community here where we live in the philippines okay. so all i could say is like, yeah we're really blessed so aside from my beautiful wife um you know I'm really grateful for our home and just having the freedom. Like I said, my wife walked around at midnight, you know, when, when we're you, in when, LA, when, when I you, wouldn't do that. <laughs> hey, no, in the ATL, you, uh, you better not do that. So <laughs> I know, I know, I know. <laughs> that's what, yeah, that's what I was saying. So when she said that last time, I said, yeah, you can go for a walk because it's really well guarded here where we live in this community and right outside mm -hmm. our home, Constance, it's just so many trees and plants and like we love trees and there's like these ponds koi ponds and all these it's like we're just so grateful so i don't really show our home in the videos i understand because i'm kind of like private about that but um yeah we're just i'm we're extremely blessed and just so grateful for what we have and yeah just life's life's really good life's well so you good. know I'm, I, I'm grateful for my neighborhood because i could walk at midnight in my neighborhood. Oh, good. <laughs> that's awesome. It's only, I'm in the ATL, but kind of in the suburbs, it's only two there streets. So I there get that. I get that. So that is so amazing. I mean, I can listen <laughs> to you forever. Hey, but I know you got to go to sleep. So um... ah, no, no, I'm, good. I'm good. It's early for me still. So, so how can listeners find you? What is your, I love your website, by the way. Thank you. Thank and, you. Yeah. Uh, it's very warm and inviting. How can we Thank find you. you on YouTube? Do you have any special courses, any classes? Yeah. Give us yeah. all of that info. Cool. First of all, I want to say thank you, Constance. I love being <laughs> on your show. I think you're the only show that I've been on several times. This is, I've only been on like Every time I've been interviewed by like a podcast or a YouTuber, it's only been once. This is my third time on your show. Well, you know, I so, have that kind of hypnotic there you effect. Go. Okay, you do. <laughs> but I really appreciate, like I said, your support and you just mm -hmm. your 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 energy. You know, I see your videos, even though I may not be clicking on it or commenting, mm -hmm. I see it pop up. So you pop up on my phone when I'm like just browsing. Oh, it's constant. Uh -huh. <laughs> you know, so I just looking say different thank you. every time. So thank you. <laughs> it's all good. You look you look great. You look great. Um, but yeah, my, my website is just my name, joshuatongle.com, T-O-N-G-O-L. And then um, just on YouTube, it's just my name. And I do have a law of attraction course that you're aware of that I shared uh, mm -hmm. about two years ago. I have that, But I'm recently have been really focusing on, I've been doing this for years, but I'm really focusing on this year is just more coaching. So mm. I guess that's something that I'm more so promoting these days. And um, Oh, wow. I, I didn't love, know that. Yeah, I just love the you know, getting to know some of the people that's been following me for so many years and, mm -hmm. and being able to help them. And so right now I have like two main areas of coaching that I focus on. One of them is the obvious one, it's manifestation. Mm -hmm. And so that's where some people can apply for that. But my other area that I focus on in coaching is has to do with uh, religion. So mm -hmm. those who are just in that place of that's what you call like so a faith needed. transition. 
you know, mm-hmm. those who are like questioning their faith, not sure, or who have moved from their from their particular strict religion and moving to a more inclusive spirituality. And I, I offer a coaching program and just kind of guide them and just see where I can help partner with them and guide, helping them with their thoughts, their ways of thinking to lead them on the path to live a full life, knowing that if you're confused in your faith at this time, um, you know, you don't have to be, and you could still have purpose. You could still have meaning and let, let's see what I can do to help you with that. And so wow. that's what I'm doing these days is coaching on those two areas, manifestation and faith issues. If you want to call it that. Well, so, that is so <laughs> needy because people don't know what to do when you've been in the church, in religion, yeah. and you move away yeah. from that. For sure. For I sure. went through so that by myself. <laughs> Me too. So mm-hmm. I think me and you could probably could share a lot of stories and have a Absolutely. lot of things that you relate with. So Absolutely. It always, it's always nice to have someone to say, uh, I, I, I understand. You're not alone. Mm-hmm. You know? And there's just so many people that understand, but we're just not connecting with each other. So that's the thing of just me coaching is trying to connect with people and say, I, I've been there too. So let's, let's, uh, let's work through this together. So guys, I want you to go to his website. I mean, what an honor it would be to coach with this man. (laughs) And uh, so if if you're like I was coming out of mainstream non-denominational church and and you, you feel in some kind of way. And on Sundays, you don't even know what to do with yourself. I went through that by myself. You can reach yeah. out to Josh. And you know he's the manifestation king. And uh, you can also just go to his website. Go right now and uh, <laughs> check out his YouTube channel and become a subscriber. Because like he says every week, I pop these out every week. Everybody. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So yeah. there you go. <laughs> Good job. Good job. <laughs> so thank you so much. You. What an honor. Yeah. Everybody, like honor I thing. said, make sure you go to this website and check him out. Let's support this great man who's really shifting and changing the world. And I want you to make a decision to create and live a powerful week, everybody. Awesome. Thank